for next year, and this is actually gonna creep up on you really, really fast, okay? You'll need to make a decision midway through this year about what maths you're gonna do in year 11, okay? Now, I just have a quick question for you. Raise your hand if you have any idea what 5, 1, 5, 2, and 5, 3 mean. Anyone? Raise your hand. Yeah, okay, then that's fine. Do you guys know what levels you do? Are you told that? Or are you general? Some of you told? Okay, that's right, that's right. My point is simply, I'm gonna to refer to this later on. It will really help you to know roughly what level you're at. They're not, they're not sort of um, clear-cut divisions. Usually we say 5, 1, 5, 2 and 5, 2, 5, 3, and everyone's sort of, it's a spectrum, okay? Uh, but I'm going to refer to that later on. So if you don't know which one you're basically in, you should find out when you go back to school, okay? Now, here's the important thing that I want to get across to you. You have these choices for next year, right? In year 11, you can either do no maths at all, okay? You can, you can choose to do no maths. Thank God I've been waiting 10 years to do this, okay? Or... You get to choose between these three levels of maths, okay? Now, um, hands up if you've seen these alternatives before. You've seen, you've heard of general and two unit and three unit. H hands straight up? Okay, good. Keep your hand up if you think you know anything about what the differences between them are. Just keep your hand up. Yeah. Okay, all right, let's see. I just want to see what you know. Okay, what would you say? What's the difference? Um, they're, they're hard. Like, for general, it's basic. Mm -hmm. Three unit is like... A bit further, yep. A bit further, and three is okay, so that's the first thing, and it's correct. So, generally speaking, I've sort of arranged it in terms of difficulty, very generally speaking. Okay, so you are getting hard as you're going down. Are there any other things we know about what's different between them? Any takers? Yeah, different topics, like maybe you know, formulas. Good, yeah, okay, so when you're going between these, one of the things that makes them more difficult is that the topics from here to here and here to here are actually different and there are harder topics in these kinds of areas and I could name them for you if we had the time. Okay. Now, is there anything else we know about the differences between them? Anything? Okay, right. I'm going to give you, I'm going to introduce a big word to you, okay? It's really important because um, the sad thing is the biggest difference between these three courses is no one's, no one's said it yet and I suppose that's because no one's told you so it's not your fault. Um, but I wonder if any of you have heard of the word. Let's put it this way. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Has anyone seen this word before? Ever? Yes. Yeah? Okay, keep your hand up if you think you know what it means. <laughs> Just gonna scratch my head, okay. Uh, I first heard about this when I was reading Tim Tim books, because there was Professor Calculus, I think. Anyway, I'm sure I'm age. Now, Calculus is a big topic. Okay? In fact, it's not just a big topic. It's, a, um, it's an overarching kind of theme. And there are all these subtopics underneath it. Okay? Things like limits and differentiation, if you've ever heard that word before. And, um, and integration. And I could keep going on. There's about oh, 16 or 17 of these subtopics that go underneath it. Okay? You can go to the Board of Studies, that link I showed you before, and actually look up the syllabus documents and find out what these are. Now, here's the thing you need to get. Look at these three, okay? General maths, two unit and three unit, that's what they're sort of colloquially called, okay? The difference between them is calculus, right? In fact, two unit and three unit are really, their actual names are, they're called the calculus courses. General maths is just a shorthand way of saying maths without calculus, okay? Now, what is calculus? I can't give you a full-on um, um, explanation of the whole idea, but the, the important thing you need to get is that um, to do calculus well and to understand what's going on, you need to be very strong with the algebra, very strong with your trigonometry, and here's, here's the clincher. Um, and if I come back to this for a second, right? The difference as you go down is not just difficulty, and it's not just this topic, but it's what we call abstraction. Abstraction. Now, what that means is abstract problems are the opposite of concrete problems. So concrete problems are Johnny has four you know, Snickers bars in this hand and five Mars bars in this hand. What does Johnny have? And you know, <laughs> probably diabetes is then what Johnny has. But you know, that's, that's the concrete sort of problem, right? As you go further down, you go away from concrete problems and you go towards weird abstract imaginary ideas like okay if I could give you 
a series of numbers that go on forever. That go on forever. Can you say that's equal to something? Yes. And the answer is you can. By the way, this is equal to 1. Okay. But how, do, how does that work? Or what happens when you take numbers and you end up with 0 divided by 0? Or infinity divided by infinity? What do those even mean? Now, can you see what I mean by... Th these are not concrete problems. They're not like, you know, people, math teachers, they make up things. They're like, oh, imagine a frog that jumps halfway across a room and then a quarter of the way across the room. And they make those stories up. I do them. But that's ridiculous. There are no frogs that do such a thing, right? This problem is completely invented. Okay? They're abstract problems. Right? So your algebra and your trigonometry and your ability to imagine, they're what you'll need as you go further down this list. Okay. In fact, I frequently, um, I'll get onto this in the next page, in my year 12 class, which is four unit maths, extension two, I constantly have to say, now imagine this with me. That's the phrase that starts off a lot of my lessons. Okay. So if you have trouble holding, imagining mathematical concepts in your head, that lends you toward some of these co courses up here. They'll be much more appropriate to you. Okay. Now, uh, let's see, where am I up to? Oh, right. How do you decide? How do you decide where I fit? Okay, so I'm, I'm still under, you know, choosing your theatre. Okay. Let me give you four questions that you should ask yourself. Okay, four questions you should ask yourself. The first question I've already been talking about, um, which is ability. Okay. Do you think you, you know, go have a look at your previous tests, have a look at how you, what stream you're in and how you've been performing. Do you think you have the ability for these harder courses? That's the first thing you need to ask. Okay? And if you don't, if you're realistic, you're like, doing these harder courses will not benefit you. If the whole time you're just going to be struggling, it will affect your other courses. I'll get onto that later. Okay? The second question is, do you have any desire or interest in these things? Okay? Now, you can be very good at something, but not be interested in it. Okay? That won't usually um, sort of motivate you all the way through a two-year course. So there's the, th the second question. The third question is, will you at any stage be using maths in the future? Okay. Now, I can tell you one of the things about the general maths course is, it's really, really practical. Okay. So for instance, I can tell you right now, there are two focus studies in it. One's about mobile phone plans and the other one is about driving and costs associated with that. So it's a super practical course. Okay. As you go further, because you're not getting concrete problems, you're getting abstract ones, right? They become different. They become more interesting to people who are maybe going towards science or engineering or even commerce. Okay, if you study commerce, you've got to know quantitative methods of accounting and you'll need that kind of thing. The last question is your other subjects. Okay? Now, the reason why I mentioned that is you might have said yes to all three of these questions, right? You might say, yeah, I've got the ability, right? Yes, I want to. Yes, I think I'm going to use it in the future. But you really need to keep this in the context of all the other units you're going to be studying next year, OK? Uh, let me give you a prime example. I have tons of students who are desperate to do extension ones to maths, OK? Um, either they are, or their parents are desperate for them to do it, OK, for whatever reason, OK? And they come to me and they say, sir, I will put, you know, this number of hours in every night. I'm going to be really good at it. It's going to be great. Okay. And then I always ask them, well, okay, how much time are you going to spend on the other subjects that you're going to study? Okay. Prime example, not just because an English teacher is in the room, is English, right? English is special in the HSC. You must absolutely, no matter how bad you are at English, count two units of your English study in the HSC. It doesn't matter if you crash and burn in the ESL, you still have to count it. Okay? So if you're putting all of your hours into all of this, right, here, and you're letting your other subjects suffer, there's kind of no point. Okay? I know the students who've gotten 99.95. Okay? They're always well-balanced students. Okay? When I teach them, they're always distributing their time very carefully and being balanced about things. Okay? So these are the four questions you kind of need to ask for yourself, and only you can answer them. Okay.